cage. And the bird cage is full of demons. They're full of demons. They're full of devils. The devil's bird cage. Now, I'm not preaching about the birds in your backyard. You've got a bunch of birds in your backyard, and uh, I'm sure that some of them would typify good birds, and some of them typify bad birds. And uh, I'll preach on the devil's bird cage. So I'm certain the devil's involved here this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that the grace of God can take a portion in the precious blood. I pray that you fill me with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd use me today. I pray that you'd overrule the devil. And I pray that the job would be done for you. Lord, please give your people understanding, give them a light, give them comprehension. And Lord, if there's somebody here today that's on the road to hell, I pray you'd open up their eyes, help them see the truth, and may today be the day of salvation for their soul. Lord, please do the work that must be done. In Jesus' precious name I pray and for his name. Amen. Now, uh, Revelation chapter 18, Revelation chapter 18, let's begin in verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power, and earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, now underline what you're about to read, Babylon is the great is fallen is fallen and has become the habitation of devils plural so underline the word devils in the passage devils and a cage of every unclean and hateful what bird so in the passage he says uh, it's become unclean. And notice the word unclean. This is the devil's bird cage. So what has happened here in the passage? He says, Babylon, Babylon, that great city Babylon. He's talking about a city on this earth. That city's in the tribulation. That city, no doubt, is the Vatican. And he says it's become the habitation of devils. It's a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, I'm going to preach on the devil's birdcage. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Matthew and turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And in Matthew chapter 13, I want you to see some things about some of this passage of Scripture. And we was over there uh, at Seattle uh, preaching at Brother Blue's church, and Dr. Ruckman had a question and answer for you. And one of the young men got up and said, Preacher, uh, to Dr. Ruckman, how do we fight against these devils that are mentioned in Scripture? He's talking about Christians. How do Christians fight against them? And I want to preach on the devil's birdcage. You know what you got to do? You got to fight as a Christian. You got to fight against the devil's birdcage. Because you know what it has in it? He has all kinds of unclean spirits coming out of that birdcage. And flying around and attacking Christians. And attacking Christians on a constant base. Constantly. You say, how does he attack you? He attacks you through the thoughts of your mind. That's how he attacks. He puts thoughts in your mind. You say, put thoughts in there? Yes, put thoughts in there. They come all kinds of ways. Come through the newspaper. They come through the television. They come through magnitude. They come all kinds of ways in this world. The devil puts a thought in your head. You say, how do you know? Because he puts them in my head. Yeah. Yeah. He puts them in my head. He puts them in my head. I think he puts them in yours too. Amen. Yours too. I think you're not different than I am. If the devil puts them in my thought, I'll bet you're in the same boat I am. You say, what are you doing? We're fighting. Christians, we're fighting. We're fighting a fight. And you got to fight. See, the devil knows what bird to get you. He knows what bird to get you. He has a bird for you, boy. He knows just what to tell you. For each one of you. He knows your circumstances, knows what's in life, knows where you are, and he knows what will get you. And he knows what to say to you. He didn't say to me, preacher, go out and get drunk tomorrow. No, because he knows that won't work. 
He's smarter than that. He turns to me. Oh, yes, he does. Now, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. You need to write down some things. You need to see some things. The devil's birdcage. And boy, what a birdcage he's got. Matthew chapter 13. And I want you to pick up verse 4. It said, And when, if you're in Matthew 13 verse 4, say amen. And when he saw, sowed some seed, he sowed the seed, fell by the wayside, fell by the wayside, the fowls came and devoured them up. The sower is going forth and sowing the seed. That is me. I'm sowing the seed. I'm sowing the word of God right here today. I'm sowing the seed. And as I sow the word of God and sow it, some of it's going to fall by the wayside. Some of it's going to fall on the wrong place. Some of it's going to fall on stony ground. Some of it's going to fall on a good ground. I'm looking for some good ground. I'm looking for a heart. A heart. Now, all four, four places it fell was on the heart. And the seed is the word of God. So if the word of God's here and the ground's here, what's here? The fowls are here. The fowls are here. Now, what are the fowls? Look at verse 19. And when one heard the word of the kingdom and understood it not, then cometh the what? Wicked one. Wicked one. Now the same thing is given in Mark. The same gives, is given in Luke. And given in John again. All three times it's given. You know what it says the birds are? The birds are demons. The birds are devils. And every place this book is preached. Every place street corner. In the door to door. House to house. Every place it's preached. There is some birds up. The devil bird came. What do the birds do? They steal something. What do they steal? They steal the word of God out of a man's heart. Don't let some devil steal the word of God out of your heart and damn your soul. People go to hell. You know why they go to hell? A bird come along. Took that thing. He said, how do they steal it out of heart? I preach the word of God to somebody and the word of God gets there and something comes up and says, You don't have to pay any attention to this. Just go to sleep. And it's gone. The word of God is gone. Stole it out of his heart. It's a bird. It's a bird. You can't see that bird. But it's a bird. All right. And that occurs time and time again through the scripture. Find them all through the Bible. Now take your Bible and uh, turn to the book of Genesis. Turn to Genesis. And turn to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Let's see something about them birds. Genesis 15. And turn to Genesis chapter 15. And look at verse 9. A Christian's in a battle against birds. That's part of his battle. And it's a spiritual battle. Because it's, it's against satanic uh, feelings and satanic thoughts that go around here. You should preach it. The devil can't put a thought in my mind. You haven't been living in reality. You've been living in some dream world somewhere. Devil can put thoughts in your mind. You know the bad thing about the devil putting thoughts in your mind? You can't tell it's the devil. He doesn't use it. The devil come up and say, this is the devil speaking to you. No, it's nothing come like that. You know what it comes across like? It comes across like me, my own brain doing the thinking. It's like I'm thinking thoughts myself. I think I'm doing the thinking. I ain't doing the thinking sometimes. Sometimes there's a spirit doing a thinking for me in my mind and in your mind. Now, you want to get it. Turn to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Now, you know the birds. You know the files. They represent in the Bible. They represent demons. They represent devils. Genesis chapter 15. Pick up verse 9. Verse 9 says, And he said to him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against the other. But, now look what happens. But the bird divided he not. 
And when the files, you just read in Matthew chapter 13, the, the files are a picture of what, folks? Devils and demons. That's what they are. It's a satanic spirit. It's an unclean spirit. And when the files came down upon the carcass, Abraham does what? Drove them away. That's what you've got to do as a Christian. You've got to drive them away. You know what happened? A person, a Christian, will start thinking about something. And he'll think on it. And then he'll think on it. And then he'll think on it. And he'll think on it. And he'll think on it. And he'll think on it again. You say, it don't hurt what I think on. Oh, yes, it does hurt what you think on. Because when you think on something and think on it, you say, nobody sees what I'm thinking on. Devil knows what you're thinking on. He's got you thinking on it. And pretty soon you'll do some of the worst things. I've seen Christians do some of the terriblest things on the face of this earth. And you say, oh, how rotten the devil. The devil done his thinking for him. He just didn't notice it. He thought it was himself. It's not himself. It's a satanic you fight that you and I are in, and we're fighting it, and you got to fight it like any fight you have a fall in the face of this earth. Because he can get you to do plumbing, right? Plumbing. By just putting a thought in your head. Now, so what did he do? said, Abraham, throw them away. That's what you got to do. Number one, you got to drive them away with the blood of Jesus Christ. You got to drive them away. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, take your Bible, and I'll get to that in a minute. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Genesis again. And turn, uh, this time, turn to Genesis, and turn to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. And I want you to see another thing. Genesis chapter 8, and uh, look at verse 7. Here, pick up some birds. Genesis chapter 8. Now, you're, we're doing a study. Birds are all through the Bible, but they represent unclean spirits and they represent another spirit. How many of you know what bird is represented of the Holy Spirit of God? A dove. Every one of you know that. Every one of you know that. So there's some good birds. That dove, that dove represents the Holy Spirit of God sitting descended down from heaven like unto a what, folks? Does. Now, Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. In Genesis chapter 8, I want you to pick up verse 7. Let's pick up verse 6. And it come to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a... What bird did he send forth? A raven. That raven is a black bird. A raven. Which is went forth, he goes forth what? To and fro, to and fro. Now hold your hand there a minute, take your Bible and turn to the book of Job. And I'll show you this raven is a type of a satanic demon that is out to destroy people. He's a type of it. And you want to get the type because it's important to use a Christian. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, look what he says in verse 7. Job chapter 1 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From what? Going to and fro. Did you get that? That's what the devil don't need to go to and fro, just like that, looking around. The Bible's a, the devil's a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And he'll start with children. Don't you kid yourself for a second? You know what children can go wrong? They can go wrong just like that. Devil start messing with their brain just like that. Start messing with them. Put things in their brain just like that. You say the devil can't. He does in scripture. He does in scripture. Don't you let the devil do your thinking for you. It said running to and fro. Now back to Genesis chapter 8. And let's pick up verse 7 again. And they sent forth a raven. Which went forth. That dove is white. Pure white. That raven is black. Until the waters were dried up upon the earth. Verse 8. Also he sent forth a dove from him. The dove is a type of the Holy Spirit. No doubt about that. And seeing if the waters were abated from off the face of the earth. But. Now take your pen and underline that. But. The dove found no rest for the sole of her feet. 
Oh, and Noah gets that uh, raven up, takes that raven out that big boat. He picks up that dove and sends that dove out, and that dove goes out. And what happens to the dove? He comes back. The dove comes back. She comes back. And right there, right there, and I believe, why? That dove couldn't land on something dead. Now, did you get it? That raven went out there, and he landed on something dead. And on some else dead. And on some else dead, run going to and fall. It, it corruption and smells don't bother the rape. That dove, he don't want something dirty and filthy and rotten. Don't you understand that? Part? The Holy Spirit don't want something dirty, filthy, and rotten. The Holy Spirit wants something clean. The Holy Spirit don't want to touch a dead corpse. Now, do you know what's dead in the Christian? Bible says, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. This man is dead. But he's to be reckoned to be alive. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. And read me verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, for the mercy of God, that you present your body a living what? Sacrifice. sacrifice. What is be to be presented as living sacrifice? This body. It's holy and acceptable unto God. The Holy Spirit wants to use my body. The dove will land and use my body. But the devil, he wants something corrupt. He wants something dead. He'll mess with the body too. The raven will mess with his body. The devil can get this body. But I'm supposed to give it to the Holy Spirit. I'm supposed to give it to the dove. Now, folks, you know you're supposed to give your body to God. The Holy Spirit to take your body. Don't you know the Holy Spirit to have your body? Why, well, I'll tell you something. You can sure turn it over to the devil and tell it to you. And control it and run it and wreck your whole life and the devil did it. And that's a Christian. That's a Christian. Then what do you got to do? You got to do like Abraham did. When Abraham put those parts up there on that thing and to make a sacrifice to God, I'm to make a sacrifice to God with my body. Then to drive them away like Abraham did. Abraham drove them away, he drove them away, he drove them away. You gotta drive them away. Or they'll put a thought in your mind and make you say things that ain't so, that ain't right, that ain't real, and they'll make you do things you shouldn't do. Why do you think Christians do some of the things they do? It ain't the Holy Spirit. You say that's just natural. Some things ain't natural. Amen and amen. They ain't natural. And Christians are doing it. All right. Uh, take your Bible and turn to the book of Hebrews. Turn to Hebrews. And turn to Hebrews chapter 9. You got to drive them away. When that bird flies in there uh, and comes about. You need to take and you need to drive them away. That's what Abraham did. All right, turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Your body is to be presented as a living sacrifice. At the same time, it's dead. At the very same time. Hebrews chapter 9, you drive them away with what? This is what you drive them away with. Hebrews chapter 9, look at verse 14. How many want to drive? How many you know at certain occasions? Uh, not all the time, but certain occasions. You know the devil put a thought in your head. You know the devil put one in there. Don't let him do it all the time. Don't let him put it in all the time. Don't let him put it in there just constantly, 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 constantly. You get things on the television, the devil put your head over the television, it will destroy you if you let it be so. And you know it. How many of you have ever watched something? Now, don't tell me. Please don't tell me. <laughs> and you go to bed at night. You lay down in bed at night. And all of a sudden, that thing you saw that you knew wasn't right, knew it was rotten, knew it was crud. And you started thinking about meditating upon it. And you said, oh, Lord, this ain't right. Now, suppose you're that kind of Christian. So don't say that. And says, this doesn't matter what you're thinking. Well, it doesn't matter what you think. It's okay. Thoughts don't get mad at me. Now, you can think about anything all the thing you want. It don't no matter. Oh, yes, it does matter. It's going to matter. It's going to change your life. It's going to make you different. It's going to affect your soul. It's going to affect your spirit. You will grieve the Holy Spirit inside you. He said, grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed into the day of redemption. 
And you're told not to grieve the Holy Spirit inside of you. And you will grieve the Holy Spirit when you yield to those thoughts. A man is what he thinks. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And you say, well, you can't prevent the devil from putting a thought in your mind. No, you can't. But you can prevent him from building a nest. You can prevent him from staying there and keep on, keeping on, keeping on. Keep. I'll show you what it's like. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll show it to you in scripture. Turn to 2 Corinthians. And turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're to fight. We're to drive those birds away. Turn to 2 Corinthians. And turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And look at verse 3. Make it verse 4. 2 Corinthians 10 4. Says. For the weapons of our warfare. Are not carnal. Did it say weapons folks? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what, folks? Casting down what? You know what that is? That's daydreaming. That's your thoughts. That's an idea in your head. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing unto captivity every thought under the obedience of Christ. You say, every thought, every thought. Why? Because those thoughts are what makes you do you do. You get to thinking it. You need to think a little bit more. You can push it off. Take a little bit more. You can push it off. Take a little bit more. You can see what some of the folks think. You can do it. 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 It might not be. Amen, brother. It might not be. You get thinking a certain way, and then you start acting a certain way. You do something, and then you mess up your whole life. Happens all the time. Happens to preachers. Happens to Christians. I'm not above it. You're not above it. You say, what happens right now in America? You know what's happened to hundreds of preachers? They're being fallen because they think some lady in the congregation gets to like them and they really, the lady they really don't like them. But they get thinking so. They get a big bloated picture of themselves. And next thing you know, give them another off over here and destroy the whole thing and destroy a bunch of Christians. Over a thought in his head, it was a little bird. And he didn't drive it away. You gotta drive him away like Abraham did. You drive him away with what? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from what? Dead words. Dead words. That's the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are dead words. That 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 raven wants to land on something dead. He wants to get something dead, brother. When you you do the works of the dead old flesh, that raven wants to land right by. When a Christian lives those ways, you know what he's going to come up with? He's going to come up with a demon, and he's going to come up with more than one of them. You say, preacher, you think it happens? I know it happens. I know it happens. It happens in the night. It, it's typical. <laughs> All right. Now, I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to turn to the book of Matthew. Turn to the book of Matthew. And I want you to see something again. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. You there? Say amen. Matthew chapter 12. And look at verse 43. Matthew chapter 12. Now, turn to the verse. Hey, you know, some, a, lot, a lot of folks don't talk about Christians being attacked by demons. They don't talk about it. You know, a lot of folks will tell you, oh, a Christian can't be, a devil can't get with a Christian. devil can't mess with a Christian. No, he can't mess with a Christian. How many of you have ever heard somebody say that a devil cannot mess with a Christian inside? I'll tell you something. He can come to the place where he can do all your thinking for you. And if he's done all your thinking for you, he's got your what? If he's got your mind, what's he got, folks? He's got your hands. If he's got your hands, He's got your mind. He got your eyes. Thank God he got my soul. 
And he's got an awful lot. He's got my hands. He's got my feet. He's got my eyes. He's got my ears. He's got an awful lot. But he can't touch your soul. Don't you ever forget that. You better fight against him. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. It says, And when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest. That unclean spirit wants something. You know what I want? It wants rest. It wants rest. Where is it? You rest inside a man? Or go out there and find rest with some else to rest in? They want rest. Don't give them no rest. Don't give them no rest. I'll tell you how to give them rest. Christian, if you'll pray, and you'll read your Bible, and you'll plead the blood of Jesus, you won't give him any rest. You know what he can't stand? He can't stand the word of God. He gets it, you get in the Bible, you read the Bible, that demon, if he gets inside of you, you say, oh, this guy's always in the Bible. He's always in the Bible. Always in the Bible. You ain't going to give him no rest. And if he's in there, he ain't going to find no rest. He can go out somewhere else seeking some rest. Because he ain't going to get it with you because you're sticking, spending time in the Word of God. Do you know what I do? I have here in this church this Bible right up here. See this Bible right here? I want it to stay right here. I don't want anybody ever take it away. I want to stay right there. You know why? Because when we leave this building and the Holy Spirit leaves this building and it's inside of you, inside here, you know what can happen? That God don't come up himself. This building ain't nothing to God. There's no temple of God. It's not the temple of God. The temple of God is that body you live. That's the temple of God. But I want this place to be protected. So I put my Bible right there. So one of them comes in here, comes by, he's got to see a couple of chapters. There's none of them he's got to look at. He said, what for? He said, yeah, that's crazy, preacher. You ever been in a building? You ever been in a building, empty church building? Walk through there at night, and something just seems to come over. You ever gone down through Salt Lake City and drive through Salt Lake City and drive through there and say, this is a weird place. There's something different about this place. You bet you there's something different about it. And it's a spirit that. You say, a spirit? A spirit. You say, it's real. It's real. You can't see it with your eyes. But I'll tell you something. If you get a little bit of fellowship with God, you can feel it. You ever been in a church that's not a good church, as always. You know it's kind of a, a hellish church, but you're in it. Uh, something or another, and you're kind of in there, and you're kind of looking around, and you say, This, something ain't right, something ain't right, something ain't right, something ain't right. You betcha something ain't right. Are you a Christian? Christian, oh, it's just feeling broad. You better start checking those thoughts that come through your mind. You better start fighting the fight. And you better take the word of God and say, I plead this thought on the blood of Jesus Christ and take this thought away from me. If you don't have to take that thought away from you, pretty soon you might be just doing what you're thinking about. And if you do what you're thinking about, all oh, hell will break you. She'll kick you out. <coughs> He'll block you like a hot potato and you'll wreck your life. By what? Just by acting on what you did, your thought. Just by what went in there. Take your Bible and turn to the book of. Uh, uh, Isaiah, turn to Isaiah and turn to Isaiah chapter 34. Turn to Isaiah chapter 34. You got to drive them away. You got to drive them away with the blood of Jesus Christ. You got to drive them away with the Bible, God's precious book. You got to drive them away with that. You got to drive them away with prayer. Write the three things down. Drive them away with the blood of Jesus. Drive them away with the Holy Bible. Write it down, brethren, the Holy Bible. The word of God. You gotta drive them away with prayer. You gotta pray them away. You should pray them away. Pray them away. You know what I do quite often? I get down every once in a while. I feel like maybe I got a devil in me every once in a while. Yeah, every once in a while I try to feel like I got one. You say, what do you do? Get on my hands and knees and say, God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I command this devil to go out. You say, what for? I want to be saved. I want to be saved just in case I've got one and don't know it. He works on a much better, uh, he's been around, you know how long the devil's been around? He's been around 
since Adam. He was there before Adam. Then there's 4,000 years before Adam, 2,000 years after Adam. He's been around here 6,000 years, brethren. Don't you think he knows me? Come on. Don't you know he knows what makes me tick? He know, he's got your number two, boy. He's got your number two. He knows what makes you tick. He knows it. He said, well, if I put that on Venus, he wouldn't even, that wouldn't even bless you. But this, oh, this one, boy, this will make him just boil. He got my number one. But he's got your number two, boy. Oh, yes, he does. He knows what every single one is. He knows what to get you on. He knows just exactly what he can just set you up for the sitting up. You know what the does? He sets you up. He sets you up. And I see him setting people up. I said, he's setting them up. He's setting them up. Yes, he's setting them up. Setting them up for a fall. A terrible fall. Now, go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34. Now I want to show you something again about that raven. Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34. And I want you to pick up verse 11. Isaiah 34, 11. It says, But the cormant, cormant, that's a bird, and the veteran, that's a bird, shall possess it. I'll show you what that is in a minute. And the owl, that's another bird, also, and the raven, there he is again. Shall dwell in it. Now what's he talking about? Take your pen and down in verse 14 underline the word satyr. S-A-T-Y-R. Now you know what a satyr is? A satyr is a half goat and half man. That's what a satyr is. It's half goat and half man. Now where is this place? Go back there and look at verse four, uh, 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense and the controversy of dying. And the streams thereof shall be turned into what? Pitch. Pitch. And the dust thereof into what, folks? Brimstone. You know what brimstone is? Brimstone comes out of our head. Fire and brimstone. You know why Jesus says fire and brimstone? Because that's what's in there. You know where these birds are at? These birds picture unclean spirits down in hell. Now you say, what does that what does that have to do with anything? Well, uh, take your Bible and uh, turn also to another verse. Turn over to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Look at verse 20. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 20. You've got to drive them away. You've got to drive them away with, by pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. You've got to drive them away by the word of God. You've got to drive them away by prayer. Now turn to Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 20. Notice what it says. Ecclesiastes 10 20. It says. If you're there say amen. Curse not the king. You're told not to curse the king. No, not in thy thoughts. Curse not the rich uh, in thy bedchamber. Now watch what it says. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 20. If you're there, say amen. Now watch it right in the middle of the verse. For a bird. B I R D of the air shall carry the voice, and that which his wings shall tell the matter. You know what it is? It's a spirit. Spirit tells that thing, carries that thing, goes to and carries it, carries it to somebody else, and tells them about it. Carries it over here and tells them about it. How many have you ever heard of a seance? Have you heard of a seance? You know what a seance is? A seance is a bunch of folks sitting around a table. And talking to dead folks. You know what they're liable to get? They're liable to get a voice. That sounds like their mother. That is a demon. Coming across there. Telling them something. Sounds just like their mother. 
Oh yeah! Someone says, oh, there's Baba! And it's a demon, it's a devil talking to him. You say, what is it? You better not mess around with some things. I'll tell you something else, another satanic thing. How many of you have ever sat and put your hands on a Ouija board? Who are you messing with? You're messing with the devil. You're messing with the demon. You're messing with Satan and Satan. You better leave that alone, boy. That thing will get you. How many have ever seen one in when in somebody going to read a crystal ball? And read a crystal ball and tell you what you like. You know what? That's what King Saul did. King Saul went into the witch of Endor and says, Bring me up, Samuel! And God intervened. And God intervened and says, Okay, but I'm going to bring you up, Samuel. And God brought up Samuel. God intervened, come into that situation, and God brought Samuel back alive. And you know what happened to King Saul? God killed him for it. God killed him for going to the witch of Endor. You say, if he killed Saul for going to the witch of Endor, what's going to happen to me for going to a seance? You better not be there, right? You better not be there. Because God might do the same thing to you. But what if he just lets you go and you get a devil in the seance? You pick up a demon back with a window with a Ouija board. And you pick up one and you keep it a while. And you pick it up and then you go for four or five years or six years or seven years and you don't know what's in here. There's a preacher, can't happen to me, I'm saved. That's where you're wrong. I'll prove it to you. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Turn to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 to show it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You got to drive them away with the word of God. You got to drive them away by praying. You got to drive them away by the blood of Jesus. And if you don't drive them away, Abraham said, Abraham, drove them away. Drove them away. Drove them away. Drove them away. Make sure you drive them away. That's what's the thought in your mind. You make sure you drive away. Don't you stay there and think. Don't you stay on it. Don't you keep on it. Don't stay there. Because pretty soon in life, it'll get funny, come part of you, and then you won't be able to quit. You won't be able to get rid of them. Because that demon that went away to try and find, you know when he came back to that man, found him cleaned up, found him all cleaned up and dressed and, and garnished. Do you know who he brought with him? He brought with him seven more spirits more wicked than himself. Seven more spirits more wicked than himself. You say, what happened? You mess with that thing and you mess with it. You say, it doesn't hurt. What I think and what I think's in the trail, you can get in an awful bad shape. Now, look at my verse. What verse am I on? Second Corinthians chapter 11. Pick up verse 3. Second Corinthians 11, 3. But I fear, least by any means, as the Serpent beguiled Eve. Now, did the devil deceive Eve? Did she say it's good for food? Did she say it was good for food? Then don't you listen to something that says it's good. Because being good is no estimation of being right. Was it good? She said it was good. It was pleasant to the eye. That's what she said. And to make one wise. What's wrong with being wise? Disobedience to what God said. God said, Thou shalt not eat it. The day that thou eatest thou, thou shalt surely die. It was disobedience to God. Anything disobedience to God is wicked. This book will tell you what's right. This book will be your guide. If you go by the book, you won't be deceived by the devil. You know what the problem is? You don't know the book. You better find out what the book says. You better find out what it says. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, let's finish it. What does it say? It says, Serpent beguiled leaves through his ability, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Devil can get your mind. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another what, folks? Another what? Underline it in your Bible. Underline it in your Bible. 
another what? That ain't the Holy Spirit. That ain't the Holy Spirit. If a Christian can receive another spirit, how is that? How is it? It's like this. When I got saved, God come in and cut away my soul from my body. And cut my soul away from my body. And my body's out here and my soul's in here. And the devil cannot touch my soul. The spirit cannot touch my soul. But he can sure mess with my mind and mess with my flesh. Then you make sure you do exactly what Abraham did and drive the devil's birdcage away. Now, I want to ask you a question. This week, or the week preceding, or the week preceding that, have you sat somewhere or laid somewhere and a thought come to your mind that you knew was absolutely no good and rotten of the devil. Say it again. Now, brethren, that's what you've got to fight for. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? That's what you've got to fight against. You knew it was wrong. That's what you can't continue on doing. He said in the book of Psalms, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my riches. Now how is he going to accept the meditation of your heart when the devil's doing the thinking for you? You've got to stop letting him do the thinking for you. Say, Lord, I'm going to get back in the book. I'm going to get back in the book and I'm going to start reading the book. Light keeps you from being deceived by Satan. The light of his book. You say, I don't believe that. Read the Bible. You read the Bible. It'll tell you the truth. It'll tell you when you, you've got the devil talking to you. When the devil says the truth, you say, nah, nah, that was just the devil. This book will tell you. This book will tell you. What did Jesus say to the devil when he took him up there on the Mount of Transfiguration to try to tempt him? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, It is written. He tempts him the second time. Jesus said, It is written. He tempts him the third time. Jesus says, It is. Then that's what you've got to do. You've got to drive all these birds away with the Word of God. With the Word of God. Every eye closed and every head bowed. The devil's bird cage got a, a bird for each one of us. I don't know what kind it is. Maybe it's a buzzard, maybe it's a bat. <laughs> 